we got here, folks? 2000-ish, 2001 maybe. Silverado 2500, there's no reverse. Uh, if you put it in reverse and rev it right up, it makes noise and it starts to move. So it does still have a reverse, but there ain't much of one left. Fluid smells burnt. So that'll be in for a transmission rebuild. Getting started on this transmission here. It's a 4L80E. Uh, I don't even know what it's out of. The guy picked it up, dropped it off. He bought it. Sight unseen said it's a good transmission. I pulled the pan off and there's about a liter water in the bottom of the pan, which is like, I don't know, three or four cups for us other people. Anyways, <laughs> so we're not going into this transmission. I'm not a transmission shop. All we're doing here is he asked me to put a shift kit into this thing. So we picked up a Transgo for the 4L80E. And I'm just perusing the instructions here because you'd have to be a madman to attempt this without at least looking at your instructions. I'm not going to really get into this too much because depending on what shift kit you buy, it's going to be different anyways. Uh, there's all kinds of different manufacturers and they use different methods for removing check balls and different gaskets and springs and plates and just look at your manual. Anyways, we're just gonna blast through this and then get ready to yank that transmission out of that Chevy over there. Oh, eight check balls. You know, other than the, uh, obviously the ruined gaskets, but other than the little bit of dirt in there, uh, that, that water didn't seem to affect anything. There's not very much water anywhere. It, must, it was all in the pan, so it must have been wherever the guy was storing it. Got in through the dipstick hole because there was no dipstick in this thing. So, didn't get into the internal, so that's a good thing. Now I just got to go get me some gaskets. And then I can look at starting to put this thing back together. Okay, well, we're into it as far as I need to. Uh, at this point, we're doing shift kit stuff. Okay, we got that old 4L80 all bolted back together, shift kits installed, it's ready to go in. Now we just gotta pull that one out. Yay. I already got the back drive shaft unbolted there. I'm undoing the hanger bearing right now. under here they torched out the bolt holes to make them bigger for some reason put my nuts back on here so there's no chance of getting them confused with anything else it's easier to take it all out at once all right we got no spillage having by how wet everything is here that seal's probably toast okay well as you can see i got the uh, cross member out which is right here Put the bolts back into the frame there for the side keepers. 
Nothing to that. It's four bolts down below, then your two mount bolts that go into the uh, transfer case adapter here. You don't got to pull that one out because that's where your torsion bars are for your front suspension. You start messing with that, you're going to be in for some interesting work. Front drive shaft is disconnected, but it's kind of tightened here, so it's not going forward enough to clear the transfer case. Not a big deal. It doesn't need to. Uh, got some linkages I got to pull off here. Because this is a manual. It's got the lever instead of push button. So it's just a matter of disconnecting that one uh, right there. And they just clip off. It's a ball and socket kind of kind of thing. Uh, other than that, I need to start unbolting the transfer case from the back of the transmission. We're to separate the transfer case from the transmission anyways because we need this for the new one. So it's just easier to do it down here. Really not that much to it. We got a bunch of studs that go around. I think it's six if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, six. You got to work your way around here. Some of them are a little trickier to get than others, but eh, you know. Whoever said mechanics was going to be easy. And of course, as you can see, everything down here is dirty and rusty, so there's no finger tight on anything. It's uh, everything is a bit of a bit of a job. All right. Well, we're all unbolted. Well, we need to support the back of the transmission. All right. We've got to put something under there to hold that up. And then we need to push the transfer case free of the studs, which needs to go back like a far. And that's just enough that it's not going to hit here. Once we got it back and out of the way, all we're doing is tilting the nose down and bringing it out this way. And it's going to make a horrible mess. That's why I got a bucket down here and a, a gallon of absorbol on the ground. All right, we're clear of the studs. Go hick it time. Getting the lunch line here. Like that. See where it just kind of wraps itself around places where you don't want it to be. paint some of them to get at where they put them. Anyway, first thing I did, torque converter goes in. Same as any automatic really, you got to make sure you're in all the way and that you're lined up with the pump. 
should have around an inch from the bell housing surface back to the torque converter itself. And that's the room you need for the flex plate up there. If you don't have an inch, then you're not in all the way. And if you try to force it, you will destroy your front pump. All right, so you can see we got our dowels ready to go on. That one's lined right up. That's that middle one in between those two shiny per parts. And that one's the same. It'll focus. There we go. There we go. That one's the same. They're basically lined up. Okay, so to give you an idea of what's involved in pulling a transmission transfer case, uh, these are just random brackets, bolts, starter bolts, exhaust nuts, bell housing bolts, of which there's actually six. I have two started in there already. Uh, torque converter to flex plate. They're Allen heads. These are a pain in the you know what to get at. And they're the reason you got to pull the starter because you can't get them anywhere else. These are the uh, uh, transfer case to the transmission nuts. There are studs in the transfer case. Obviously your transmission mount. Universal joints. Uh, these are the transmission mount bolts that go over here with this. Uh, uh, these are bracket bolts. These are for the cross member. These are the cross member helpers. They are four bolts there that I have screwed into the frame. Uh, yeah, that's about it. But anyway, you get an idea. There's a lot of random stuff that's got to come out just to get a transmission out of this thing. All right, you can see there the bell housing is up against the engine. I got the bottom two bolts in. Now I just got to fire in the other four. And then the torque converter bolts. All right. Once you get the first one, don't tighten it up until you get the one opposite of it tightened up. Otherwise, you're going to have trouble getting them in because there is some slop in there and then your bolts will be tight. The only place to unbolt them is from right here, which is why you got to pull the starter out. It's the only place you can get a tool. You can see here, you can't get in behind it like in the, you can in the older cars. All right? So yeah, that's it. That's your, your whole world is that right there, which is why the starter's got to come out. So in other words, put one bolt rotate it, put another bolt, rotate it, put all six in loose, and then you can start tightening them up. Uh, lines, these lines rotted out here, so I still got to put lines back in it. So my next thing is to put the rest of the bolts in so I can get this transmission jack out of my way. The easiest way i found to do these, take big long extension, fire it up here. Okay, well, because so many people figure that because I don't show myself torquing everything, that I don't torque things. So, for you people, here we go. 35. There. Can I stop filming boring stuff like that? You can see what I mean about not having a whole lot of room right here. And they're torques, so they're a pain in the nowhere. <coughs> Fight the compression a little bit here, but it's not too, too bad. And yeah, we got a busted transmission line, which is why it's, well, not busted, rotted transmission line, which is why it's still leaking. 46 is the torque. There, I did it. I'm not showing you all of them. All right, torque converter cover. Yeah, that way. Starter's already on. The astute among you have noticed. Nothing for that. And it's held on with the biggest damn bolt you've ever seen. I don't know why you need six of these suckers to hold on an aluminum cover. Not structural. This keeps dirt out. Well, I guess it does add some structure. Otherwise, why would it be so beefy? 
I don't know what, but okay. Okay, so you got four there, and then you got two that go into the oil pan right here. A lot of bolts to hold on the dust cover. I had to heat those up with a torch to get them out. So you think they need to be torqued, you're mental. All right, exhaust is on. Another check mark in the box. Oh, red face, red face. Transmission up where I needed it. I get the angle right. There we are. Yeah, I'm old. What of it? Now, these are a pain to get these things in just because the way they designed them. It's all wrench work. I'm not even going to hyperlapse that. I'm just going to bolt it on. Of course, the one that's the biggest pain is the one that's going to give me grief. All right, we're going to flush this cooler, even though I think it's a complete waste of time. I'm using an old transmission and an old torque converter. If they're not rebuilt, there's going to be plenty of sludge in there. It's just this much line in the coolers. I've already flushed the old line. There's nothing in that. All right, you can see the top. That's when it flushed out, and then it starts to clean out with this white, foamy stuff, which is mostly bubbles. Then you turn the can upside down, just air and blow the rest of the cleaner out. Again, I don't think it's going to make any real difference. Okay, I just got the front drive shaft put back in. Uh, not bolted in yet. You just got to kind of wedge it up beside the transmission between the exhaust and above the diff. Put the back in, line it up on the splines. That rubber boot is the biggest pain because it's stiff and it wants to grab all the way, so you're kind of messing around with that quite a bit, but nothing special. There's our mount on. transmission and transfer case back in and fill it up and see what's going on. I gotta fill the transfer case as well because it's been rolled around here and it's leaked out most of it. So I would 